Hello, so this is going to be interesting. Um, I have no idea how this is going to go. This isn't going to be one of my, like you can see, I'm just in my casual clothes. This isn't something that I plan. This is a spontaneous, sort of vulnerable video. This isn't like me um, standing in front of a camera with like a whiteboard and teaching a class. And this is, I want to show you something a bit different and this is this i can tell this is already very this is already going to be very hard for me i had an experience that i had an experience today that that triggered me it triggered me really really hard i felt my body going into like strong fight or flight response um i just realized coming on this and doing this live that i actually felt the same similar response just going live so just knowing that other people are going to be seeing this stuff that i'm doing Makes me very uncomfortable. I do some of the, so this is a technique that I'm going to show you, I'm going to do on myself. Um, this is something that I, that I that I use with my clients, this is this kind of technique. Um, and the analogy that I'm using today is actually something that I picked up from one of my clients. And the analogy that happened to them is as they were feeling into the sensations in their body, they could feel them sort of draining to the digestive system and that their body would begin to digest them. And ever since they gave me this analogy, I feel like a very similar experience happens in my own body. So whenever I have some kind of experience that somewhat exceeds my emotional capacity or is just like it was too much, too fast, too quickly, and I didn't have time to actually process everything that happened, I, I feel it, it gets stuck in my stomach. And I, so I was, I was just laying down now. I was, I was, I was meditating. I was trying to digest this emotion that, that, that had overwhelmed me. And inside my stomach, I felt this ball of five different, five distinct different energies or emotions. Hey, Jonna, this is, this, this should be interesting for you. I think you'll like what I'm talking about. It's quite funny, quite interesting. So... It's actually six now. There's actually six because coming on here and doing this, there's now an extra emotion of. Um, so this is this is why this is going to be a bit different because I'm going to have to take some time to actually like feel into myself and feel what I'm actually what I'm actually feeling. So. So this extra new sort of blob. So let, let me give you more of the analogy. So it feels like my, my, there's a hole in my stomach that's like this. So my stomach is huge. And then there's a hole that goes into my small intestine, but there's like a blob that can't get through this hole. It's too big. So in my mind, I can start breaking this up so I can break this blob into smaller blobs. And then these smaller blobs into even smaller blobs until they're small enough that they can pass through into the small intestine. And I can actually process and digest this emotion instead of it going undigested. Um... So there's, there was five blobs. There was there was five emotions in this blob. Now there's six because I'm coming. I've come on and I've I've done this. So before, before I did this, when I was laying down, I identified the first emotion was fear. Was was terror. So, I'll give you I'll give you a bit of context about. So Joanna says you are so brave. Can I marry you? Yes, you can. That's why we're engaged. <laughs> we'll make that happen. So. The first. The first feeling that I, that I really feel is, is fear, is terror. So I had the NHS call me on the phone and it was the immunisation department and they asked me when I wanted to book my COVID vaccine. So this triggers so many different patterns that I've got. This triggers my conflict aversion um, pattern. This triggers my... Um, problems with authority, so not knowing how to um, set boundaries, how to handle authority properly. Um, it exceeds my capacity for, for, for being able to feel fear because I have my, my ability to... It's very difficult. It's very difficult to do this live, so bear with me. there's also a part of me that wants to perform i want to make this like look good so other people are interested in it but it's really not something you can fake it has to be really sincere so it triggers all these patterns and when i got onto the phone with the person 
she was she was lovely. She was like, oh, hi, I think her name was Marilyn. She's like, I see, I can't even remember because I was in such a traumatic state. Like, oh, hi, my name's Marilyn. I'm just calling to discuss your plans for, um, for when you'd like to book your COVID vaccine. She was lovely. There was no threat. There was no intimidation. And I'd projected this whole emotion onto this situation. There was none of this energy was there. This was, I know this was all me. And this, this, I can only identify this because I've been working on my emotional capacity for things like fear for a while. So if, if, if that emotion would have completely exceeded my emotional capacity for fear, it would be impossible for me to identify with it and say like, this is my fear that I'm projecting on the situation. I would say, this is a threatening situation. She's the one that made me feel this way. It's all her. And that is not, that is not reality whatsoever. This was nothing to do with her. She doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't, honestly, she doesn't care if I get my vaccine or not. She's doing a nine to five job. She's probably got bills to pay, mouths to feed. She doesn't, she doesn't care. She doesn't care what I do. And I'm the one that projected all of this on the situation. So immediate response, fight or flight freeze. It's like, just get, get out of this situation. I think I'm actually going to be swearing in this because I'm trying to be very authentic. So if you don't want to hear me swear, click off, watch a different video. I'm probably going to be swearing from now. So you've, you've been what? It's very hard. I've been censoring it. I can't censor when I do this. So my gut instinct was get the fuck out of here like run like you're gonna die run so it's like obviously it's a phone call so I'm like okay I'm not gonna answer the phone call the thing is they've already called me before and I know they're gonna keep doing it so my initial reaction to the first call was like I can't handle this then I built a bit more capacity and it's like okay they're gonna do this again I'll be prepared next time so they call me and I'm like I'm like I can just ignore it I can do it next time it's like no you're in your pattern, come out of your pattern. It's like, okay, so you have to confront this. What is it that you want? What is the outcome of the situation? So I would like for, I would like to express that I do not want to get my COVID vaccine and that I do not want them to call me anymore. And I would like to have said, if you continue calling me, I'll continue this. I will consider this harassment. Didn't go to plan because I was in a triggered state. I wasn't centered. So my energy was just going all over the place. So instead of being like calm and collected and communicating this effectively, it came off as, um, I was, I was, I was really scared. I was in fight or flight. I would try to stay polite. It's actually quite easy for me to stay polite in these situations because my pattern that, that I've experienced, I would just willingly comply to, to, and be very agreeable to diffuse the conflict in the situation. So to actually say like, no, this isn't something I want. This is something that I don't stand for was very hard for me because in my previous experiences if I were to do this it would incite significant conflict so to perhaps escalating to the point of like me feeling like physically in danger so you can see how again this is so a vaccine is a medical procedure and it requires consent so if I'm intimidated and scared and I give the consent like it will happen when I don't really want it to so to say no very hard very triggering lots of emotion flying all over the place so I ended up saying, like, I don't, I'm not planning on booking my COVID vaccine. This is not something that I want to do. Um, and then it kind of wrapped up. I wasn't able to say, like, don't call me again. If you keep calling me about this, I'll consider it harassment. I wasn't able to say that. That's way too assertive for me. I'm not there yet. That's, that's where I'd like to be. I'm not there yet. So the lady on the phone was lovely. There was no pressure. It was just, it was very, it, she was fine. The situation was actually okay. When I, when I, withdraw all of my emotion that I projected on the situation. It was, she was completely lovely. She was very considerate. There was no pressure. It was fine. I projected all of this fear on the situation. So identifying that, I'm like, okay, there's a lot of emotion that I've got going on here. I need to digest this. And I'm like, I want to work. I want to record videos. I want to, I want to do stuff. But it's like all of this emotion that's like creating turmoil inside me. I'm like, I can't focus. I can't think. I can't do anything. I need to process this. I need to digest it. So I come here and I lay down. So I'm in, I'm in, I'm in my bedroom. Um, I come here and I lay down. I'm like, okay, what's going on? I feel into my gut. There's this big ball and it has five distinct parts. So I start splitting them apart. The first one that comes up is fear. The first ball is fear. Um, so now I'm in a place where I'm going to be processing that. But since doing that, I've gone live. So I've actually got six, six significant balls inside this, this ball. So the first one is first one is so now I'm gonna to have to slow down a little bit I can't be like ooh, I have to really center myself
So the first one is shame. So to, oh, okay, so as soon as I identify, so I'm going to walk you through everything that's going on as I do this. The first one is shame. As soon as I identify this feeling of shame, I feel like I want to cry around my eyes here. I think you might be able to see they're a bit more red. And as soon as I said the word shame, when I identified it, I had a hot, a hot like a wave came from my, from my solar plexus and it sort of, it was like a wave. It went and it just like washed all through my whole body. So just identifying the emotion, processed some of it. So I feel, so this, this shame is attached to one of my patterns of not feeling good enough, not feeling, um, not feeling worthy. Um, I get really hot. Oh, there's a lot of energy coming up. I feel really hot. <laughs> so I, so obviously I'm on social media. I'm like, a, I'm a health coach. I, I try to, in some way, look at, look like I've got everything all together, you know? And I think that's a very common facade that people do on social media is like, oh yeah, like I'm making money, I'm changing lives, my life's fantastic, it's brilliant, I've got everything under control, I know exactly what I'm doing. So to come on here and say like, oh look, I still don't even regulate my own emotion very effectively, I have to sit down and actually manually chew through it and make it happen, feels embarrassing. And even deeper than that, to acknowledge that I'm a Phoebe kind of person. I'm a person that really is prioritizing how I feel and trying to process these kinds of feelings is feels kind of cringy to me. And I feel like this is a shame that's this is an externalized feeling of shame. So this is something that I've adopted that isn't actually true about myself. So now I can see inside there's two parts that are, that are sort of fighting. I've got one part here which feels like my true authentic belief and that is that feeling is my superpower so true authentic expression is the most powerful thing you can do it's the most inspirational it's the most vulnerable it's the most powerful state of being true authentic expression and then this other part over of me over here that feels that feels like i'm not enough and like i should almost man up like kind of like get yourself together like you've got work to do you've got an important job people need you like stop sitting around and thinking and feeling and doing this airy fairy girly stuff and like be a man and get on with it so again trigger warning um this is like my emotional healing stuff so nothing that i say here is Oh, okay, that's interesting. So I've realised I've gone into another pattern where I'm afraid to offend people. So I'm afraid to speak my truth because I'm afraid to offend people. Can you see how that I just went into that? But then it's like, oh, wait, why did I do that? So I analysed my behaviour. Why did I say this? So I am afraid of offending people because that is not what I want to do. I'm actually a very sensitive person. I actually genuinely care a lot about every person that watches my videos, about every person that I work with, about anyone that's healing or anyone that's dedicated to do this work or just anyone in general I really do care so I don't want to turn people off to what I'm saying because I say something that triggers something in them but I know that that's nothing to do with me the same way that what happened on the phone with this lady was nothing to do with her and everything to do with me so if something that I say triggers you probably need to do some work on that try and figure out why it's triggered you so I'm I'm just I'm expressing myself I've got I'm damaged, I've got broken things inside me. So if something comes out and it's not politically correct, I don't mean any offence by it. Okay, so I've moved myself all the way back out of my body. So I've stopped experiencing somatically and now I'm doing co cognitive processing. So now I need to pull myself back into my body again. So the thing about shame is to me, in my situation, as soon as I shine light on the situation, so as soon as I express and like, I'm, I'm vulnerable about this feeling of shame that I have as soon as I sh share this with people that I'm afraid to share it with it just dissolves immediately so I'm quite comfortable now um, not as comfortable as if I was doing this by myself but I think I'm comfortable enough to proceed so now I've got this 
this ball in my stomach. It feels like it feels like a spinner. I don't know, you know, like a spinner where it's like got a so there's five different segments and it feels like there's a spinner. And the spinner is spinning, so let's see which one it lands on. And so there's a blue one, there's a white one, there's a grey one, there's a yellow one, and there's a pink one. So it's gonna and that was all intuitive. I just they were just cut the colours that came to my mind. So it's Okay, so the blue one, the blue one is ready to go first. So now in my mind, I'm visualizing this as a little blue blob that's in my stomach. So I can imagine like my stomach, my lower, uh, my, my pylor what was it called? The pyloric valve, pyloric sphincter. And I can see the blue thing and I'm going to just let it slide through into the, into the small intestine. And as I do this, I'll begin to digest it. So this is a feeling of self-expression. So I would relate the light blue color to the solar to the throat chakra. This feeling is. It also feels light blue because it's sad, because I really, I really want to be able to express myself authentically. I really, really want to. It's something I really want. I think it's really important. And I've noticed as I'm saying this and feeling this, I feel teary. Um, my voice is changing. I don't know if you know it. I don't know if you can pick it up on the audio. It's got a bit croakier, which obviously is this chakra. So something's happening there. I'm just noticing whatever's happening there. It makes me feel really sad that I just can't express myself. And I'm sad that I can't cry as well. It's really hard for me to cry. And I can feel it. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it in my face. But there's still that that layer of just shame attached to it and what I find important in these things is not pushing it so I want to cry it's like it's like going to the toilet I can feel like there's a poo there but it's like if you try to squeeze it out you just get bloody hemorrhoids so <laughs> so I'm not going to try and squeeze it out or force it it's just like just identifying that it's there that's just the step for now so I'm sad that I can't express myself But in a, in a strange way, I am expressing myself now. So that's kind of diffused by itself because it's like, well, actually, you are being very authentic. You are express, expressing yourself now. And I feel like instead of it just being a traumatic situation that I'm left with PTSD from, I'm actually processing it. So I'm actually I'm actually already on the way to doing it. So that's gone. That That is gone now. That feels like it's completely digested. That's fine. Okay, the next color that comes up is gray. There's a gray blob. This blob is despair. So despair is an interesting emotion for me. It's one of my most overwhelming emotions. And anytime I exceed my capacity with another emotion, I go into despair because it's just too much. And when despair comes up as my peak emotion, it, there's like this immediate desire to kill myself. It's like this situation is so overwhelming. Like I cannot handle this. I cannot take responsibility for this. Like I need a way out of this situation. So despair is always, so there's usually like heightened emotion, heightened emotion, heightened emotion. And then I go numb. I drop all the way down and I just feel like this is an untenable situation and I have to die. I cannot handle this. So I'm just going to sit with that for a second, just acknowledge it. This is a very, this, so the other, the other, the blue one that I just processed, the, the, the self-expression was kind of chewy. It just went, it dissolved and digested very easily. This grey one feels like a grey rock. It is very, it sits very heavy in my stomach. It is. So I'm in, in my stomach, I'm envisioning this grey sort of calcified stone and I can notice this very potent acid feeling in my stomach so my stomach feels very irritated and very acidic so I'm just allowing that acid to begin to digest this emotion so this rock is just there because as I've said despair for me in this situation is a cover emotion so I just have to process through this despair So the things that despair likes to say for me is, 
why the fuck are you doing this live? Why are you doing this on a video? Nobody cares. I can't even be bothered to try to think. I can't even be bothered to try to understand myself why I'm doing this. And as the acid, so this is green acid, is breaking down the, the sort of the grey calcifications on this stone, it turns to red. It turns to a red stone. It's a red stone instead. This is, I think this is rage. This is a very powerful anger feeling. I feel this. Okay, this is very interesting. Sorry, this is this is one of the hardest emotions for me, so this is this is this is boundaries energy, this is self assertion. I'm angry at myself that I can't be assertive, that I can't maintain my frame. I'm very frustrated that I can have situations come so rapidly out of my control, going into something that I was prepared for the other day, and then to feel this large level of emotional response and just completely lose myself and completely become out of my frame, completely out of control. I don't like that. I don't like that about myself. I don't think that's a good trait. I would like to be able to, to do that. Somatically. There's a lot of heat moving around my body coming out of my solar plexus area, I'm moving up to my chest, down my arms, into my legs, into my feet. My hands and feet have gone cold, like a fight or flight style response. And that's it, I've hit capacity. So I got to the point where just feeling into that, the stone began to ca basically calcify itself again, and I couldn't couldn't tap that emotion anymore. So that's it. That's when my body says stop. So that's where we stop. So I still have four four little rocks in my stomach. I've got this one, and there's some others. They might change. Um, that's all I can do now. I don't feel better. I don't feel. Actually, I feel kind of numb to be honest. So I kind of used up all of my feeling for the day. Which is interesting because I have a somatic experiencing session later. So that should be interesting. We'll see what happens there. Maybe I'll go in and process. That's, that's probably why my body won't let me go into this. It's got me prepared. And it's saying, okay, now you're at this place where you know that you're going to be able to go into this in more detail in a safe environment. So it should be fun. I'll update you later. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, this is what the higher levels of healing look like. This is what learning how to feel again looks like. Uh, if you have any more questions please let me know, and this was very hard, so if you appreciate it, I really appreciate you letting me know, so see you.